October 31st, 2002. It's 11 p.m. and I'm sitting in a booth at a McDonald's after trick-or-treating, reading Shaman King for the first time because one of the cul-de-sac houses gave me a copy of Shonen Jump after they had run out of full-sized crunch bars. The McDonald's sits on the west side of town, in the same parking lot of a grocery store that I would one day work at around the age of 17. My fingers were still numb from walking around in the crisp autumn air outside, and I could smell a combination of french fries and fresh manga pages that I held in my hand. The establishment was empty and silent aside from my family. My little sister played with her Happy Meal toy, clacking it on the table. My parents softly conversed with a family friend while they took turns holding his newborn baby girl. And I was busy explaining to the mother why my comic book read backwards. This memory exists in my imagination as an Edward Hopper painting, surrounded by silence and nighttime, only dimly lit by the light of the establishment. It was like nothing existed past the child-sized handprint on the window next to me. There was nothing else in the world but us, and nothing happening anywhere but our own conversations. It's like a liminal space in my mind that I will often revisit to feel comfort. It's one of the few moments I lived where I felt truly calm and at peace. The silence, the chill night air, a full belly of greasy food, a new manga, the absolute euphoria of it all causes some chemical in my brain to dump and spill, numbing me to my toes and curing the common anxiety that plagues most of us in our adult lives. In a hundred human years, most people only experience a handful of these moments so warm that they can light the furnace of your soul for decades after. But the realization that you can never get those moments back is often a burn that hurts more the older you grow. Two years later, I was confronted by my mother and stepfather asking me if I didn't want to dress up this year. They also suggested that I maybe stay home and watch scary movies, and they promised to buy me a huge bag of candy. I insisted on trick-or-treating despite none of the costumes from the children's section fitting the way they used to. In some turn of events, my sister and I ended up at my father's house that year, and my mother and stepfather went to a Halloween party with their friends. I sat in my father's living room and tried to play Halo 2 while debating on whether or not I should go trick-or-treating ever again. I didn't mention this to my father, who sat in a lazy boy next to the window. He was about three beers deep and excitedly watching the sunset. I think he may have mentioned at least 10 times how excited he was to take us trick-or-treating. When the sun finally set, he filled two mixing bowls, a popcorn bucket, and a large Tupperware container with an assortment of fun-sized chocolate. He sat them on a folding table outside the front door. I remember feeling reluctant about donning my plastic scythe and black hooded cloak, but something about my dad's smiling, beer-goggled face made me forget about how out of place I felt with the other kids in the neighborhood. After locking the door, he said, Come on, guys, let's go! and he jogged ahead of us to the neighbor's house. He would wait on the front lawn of each house, and when we came back, he would excitedly ask, Ooh, what'd you get? Eventually, I didn't care anymore about whether or not I was too old. I was jogging from house to house with my dad and my little sister, and pretty soon the pillowcases we had were so full that the next house we went to had to be back home. There was surprisingly still some candy left in the containers that my dad had put out. He asked me if we could use some of my candy to fill the dishes again, and said that, this way, nobody will bug us for the rest of the night. And we spent the rest of Halloween night playing Halo 2, eating our candy, and listening to my dad tell us stories about him trick-or-treating when he was a kid. I'll never forget his somber tone when he said, I miss it, but I'm glad I got to go again with you two. After that year, all of my Halloween traditions grew up and became a bit more mature. I had made a pretty tight-knit friend group in middle school, and every year until senior year of high school, we would go to Megan's house for scary movies. Her mom and dad would buy us a bunch of candy, and we would all snuggle up under blankets while we would make commentary about the movies, or some of us would pretend to scream during a scary moment as an excuse to grab someone. One of these Halloween parties was where I got to first cuddle with a girl. She pretended to be scared and grabbed my arm. My heart jumped to my throat as I put it around her. I hadn't thought about trick-or-treating in years. And whether or not I would go again wasn't a question. I was too old now. And I had other interests. I had real problems, other than being too old for trick-or-treating. About halfway through high school, my mother and stepfather got divorced. And I was no longer talking to my father after a pretty serious fight concerning my mother and stepfather's marriage. It's weird how some of the happiest parts of your life can just abruptly fall apart. I remember crying on the phone to my girlfriend after overhearing my mom discussing with my grandfather about unpaid bills. Eventually, I got my first job at a local grocery store. I didn't really have a choice. I would often have to work on holidays for extra pay, and that included Halloween. 
And each Halloween, I could see families and their children going into the same McDonald's that my parents took me to that one night so many years ago. I could always see a family sitting in the same booth where I sat reading Shaman King. But this time, I was on the other side of the window's child-sized handprints. I was tired. My first Halloween working at the grocery store, I saw a family headed inside the McDonald's as I locked up the automatic doors and began to walk to my car. I drove to Megan's so that I could attend our little Halloween tradition of movies and blankets. I walked into Megan's house, still wearing my embroidered store uniform. The lights were all on, and the movies had ended before I got there. For a moment, I stood outside the living room's entryway, watching everyone have their own conversations and still snuggling in the blankets. There was a brief moment of somebody noticing I had walked in and everyone yelled, Nikki, and waved hello before returning to their conversations that I wasn't a part of. It felt awkward to arrive so late, but I sat down next to my girlfriend and joined their conversations. She was wrapped up in a blanket with a couple of our friends, like we would do every year. I would have gotten under it too, but there wasn't enough room for one more person. I had to get my own blanket this year. It wasn't long after that I had arrived that Megan's mom kicked us out because it was so late. She asked if any of us wanted candy to take home, but none of us really ate candy anymore, so we declined. I hated having to drive home in that neighborhood of trick-or-treaters. I had never done that before. You drive a couple feet, stop so kids can run across the road, drive a couple feet, stop. I had to do this all the way until I was out of the subdivision and on a main road. I got home and saw my mom had fallen asleep on the couch watching some Halloween movie marathon on the CW. I went to my room and booted up the PS1 I had bought at a garage sale that year. I didn't have a lot of money for games on account of helping my mom pay the mortgage, so I could really only play the old games that were floating around pawn shops and retro stores. I had work in the morning, but I figured I could play some Final Fantasy IX for about an hour and still get a full night's sleep if I slept in my uniform and replaced my morning shower with some body spray. And that was my crazy Halloween in junior year of high school. I worked, spent some unenjoyable time with friends, and then got to play a whole hour of video games before falling asleep in my work uniform. As my senior year of high school rolled around, I experienced a pretty traumatic breakup on top of everything else going on. I had been dumped before, but I had never been dumped by a girl who I had picked out baby names with. We had been together for about a year, which is practically marriage by high school relationship standards. I remember sitting at Megan's house with some friends and venting about the breakup. Everyone tried their best to lighten the mood, but nothing worked. So Megan tried to steer the conversation to happier topics, like what movies we would watch for Halloween that year. I joined in as we made suggestions, and I started to forget all about the breakup. At some point in the conversations, I decided that I didn't want to sit inside and watch scary movies. I don't know what came over me, but in the middle of everyone excitedly picking out movies, I blurted out, Let's go trick-or-treating this year! Megan and everyone stopped to stare at me, and my friend AJ was the first to protest, saying that we were too old. Everyone awkwardly laughed and agreed. They were about to start suggesting scary movies again, but I interrupted by saying, no, we're not. Yes, we were. And I had the driver's license and tax returns to prove it. I explained that we weren't 18 yet, so technically we were still kids. Plus, who would actually care? I don't remember what I said or how long I talked for, but I do remember giving a courtroom-style argument for why we should go trick-or-treating one last time before becoming full-fledged adults. Think of it, I told them. Trick-or-treating one last time. Maybe it's because I did convince them, or maybe it's because they were really good friends who wanted to humor me in my time of emotional need. Regardless, we were a group of 5, 16, and 17-year-olds who were now agreeing to go trick-or-treating. I spoke to my boss and gave him two weeks' notice, telling him that I couldn't work on the 31st. He asked me if I was sure about that due to the additional holiday pay and me helping my mom pay bills. I told him that it was okay because I was doing something special and really important with my friends. He said that he understood, and he agreed to give me some extra shifts as long as I didn't tell anyone. Over the next couple of weeks, we all started to kind of get into it, planning costumes and picking which subdivisions we would go to. Megan suggested we go to one of the upper class neighborhoods, which were all on the west side of town. We would park in the grocery store parking lot, and then we would trick or treat in the little neighborhood behind the grocery store. And just like that, everything was set. We met up at Megan's house with some pretty half-assed costumes. Megan hiked up a plaid skirt and wore a white button-down with one of my ties, a schoolgirl. 
AJ wore black pants, a black hoodie, and bought a wooden sword from the anime section at a Hot Topic. He called himself a modern ninja. I painted a hockey mask in graffiti. Our friend Martina put in vampire teeth and dressed as a goth. Dean wore a button-down, slacks, and fake glasses, and held manila envelopes because he was a tax collector, which is terrifying. We rummaged through the hallway closet to get pillowcases that we would use to hold the candy, and then we all piled into Megan's car. Pretty soon, we were parked at the grocery store, but nobody immediately got out. There was a bit of tension and nervous laughter. Finally, AJ yelled, Come on guys, let's go! and hopped out of the car before jogging across the parking lot into the first house. We didn't really go trick-or-treating. We mostly just walked around the neighborhood in our costumes and shot the shit. Every block or so, we would see a house with a ton of huge decorations, and AJ would yell, they probably have full-size candy, and he would sprint up the driveway unashamed. I would follow him every time because it was my idea, so I felt obligated. Everyone else would just wait on the front lawn, and when we got back, they would jokingly ask, ooh, what'd you get? Most of the adults we were trick-or-treating from would laugh and ask if we were too old for trick-or-treating. AJ would say, I'm only six. The adult at the door would then say, is that so? And AJ would promptly respond with, that's what it says on my voter registration. And he always got a laugh and they would always give us candy, with a few exceptions. There were a handful of houses that turned AJ and I down because we were obviously too old. But it was more funny than anything. I remember running back to our friends and laughing. They wouldn't give us any candy and AJ behind me remarking, those assholes. And then we would all keep walking the neighborhood. Somewhere around midnight, maybe 11 p.m., we all decided that it was getting kind of late and we didn't want to do this anymore. We made our way back to Megan's car, but before headed home, someone suggested that we grab something to eat. It was late and none of us had eaten, aside from me and AJ stuffing ourselves with candy. Megan suggested the McDonald's on the other side of the parking lot. It was cheap. It was food, and it was the only place still open. I'll never forget walking into that McDonald's. We opened the door, and we were greeted by a wall of noise. And it's a very specific noise. A siren song that attracted teenagers our age. It was the sound of a hundred excited conversations all happening at once, and you know the kind. You've heard it before. It was the sound of countless other teenagers all packed into a food establishment that was much too small and all sharing conversations that were much too loud. Megan immediately recognized some of her friends from her fifth period choir sitting at a table in the back. Dean met up with some of his friends from the baseball team who were still waiting in line to order, and before I knew it, we were all sitting at opposite corners of the McDonald's, talking to all of our other friends. We must have been there until about three in the morning. I felt like we had walked into some impromptu party. I got to meet new friends, and I got to spend time with some friends that I didn't usually see outside of class. Some of the other teenagers were also in costume. Most were coming from parties, but some of Megan's friends admitted to having the same idea that I had. They too had also attempted trick-or-treating that night, and both of our groups spent time exchanging stories about our experience. This McDonald's visit was much different, louder, and much more chaotic than the McDonald's trip I had in 2002. But I still look back on this McDonald's trip with the same kind of nostalgia that I felt for the original one, or the nostalgia that I felt trick-or-treating with my dad. I think it's weird how nostalgia can come in a seemingly infinite number of flavors, and that nostalgia used to make me sad because they were all moments I could never get back. I used to feel sad that I could no longer trick-or-treat or do quirky teen things with my high school friends or that I couldn't hang out at McDonald's until 3am anymore. There was a point in my early 20s where I thought that Halloween and other holidays couldn't be fun anymore because I wasn't able to experience them as a child. But I asked my mother about that night in 2002, and she still remembers it just as fondly as me, despite her not getting free candy or manga. She remembers it fondly because she loved spending time and making memories with her friends and family. And my father still remembers that night we went trick-or-treating and played Halo 2, because his favorite moments were the ones that made my sister and I happy. And despite little me feeling like nothing else was happening beyond the tiny handprint on McDonald's window that night in 2002, I now know that there were billions of memories being made at that moment. And those memories were all wildly different from what I was experiencing and fond to the people experiencing them for reasons beyond my comprehension at the time. As the years have gone on, I've been able to create some of those memories that were once unfathomable to little Nikki who was reading Shaman King in that McDonald's. Like the time my wife covered me in ash gray body paint and put fake fangs in my mouth. 
We spent about an hour applying it all, and as much of a chore as it was, it was a chore that we spent together, so I didn't mind. I remember that her and I went to a drive through for burgers after attending a friend's Halloween party, and my costume made the cashier scream so loud that my wife talks about it every Halloween now. It's the whole reason we kept the pictures of my costume. And this year, my wife and I get to take our nephew trick-or-treating with my sister and her husband. It'll be my nephew's first Halloween, so I know we'll remember this for the rest of our lives. I used to be sad that I could never go back to the Halloweens I once had, but now I'm excited for the kind of Halloweens that I have yet to experience, in new ways that I haven't previously experienced Halloween before. Like the inevitable Halloween where my wife and I will have our own child to dress up, and we'll watch them waddle from door to door while they babble incomprehensible nonsense, and of course they will let us know that they are tired only by plopping down on the ground and crying, and I will have to carry them home because their tiny little body won't allow them too much excitement for too long. And I cannot wait. And I'll always remember this Halloween too, partly because I got to share these stories with you. It means a lot that you watch my videos, but I also hope you've made plans to spend time doing something that you enjoy with people that you love. When I was little, this holiday was all about free candy, but as I got older, I learned that holidays should instead be about the people that you spend them with and the memories you can all make together. And I like to think this video will be one of those memories for me, because you could have been doing anything in the world right now, but you are right here with me, and you'll never understand how much that means. And um, yeah, that's it. That's the that's the whole story. Well, stories, but yeah, those are things that have actually happened to me. I uh, I think I want to do something like this a lot more often. Um, the YouTube channel's still young, and I'm still trying new things. But I really wanted to do something like incredibly different from what I had done in the past, but also kind of the same as some of my more successful videos. So. This was kind of like inspired by the one Dragon Ball Super video that like really popped off and started getting me some subscribers on this channel and I was like, you know what, maybe I should start opening up more about like my life and the lessons that I've learned and honestly it's really fun. I've been doing creative writing since I was I think nine. Uh, my dad still has this notebook where I used to write, do not make fun of me, um, but I used to <laughs> write uh, Gorillas, the band, the like animated band. I used to write Gorillas and Sonic the Hedgehog crossover fan fiction. And my dad, my dad still has the notebook that I wrote it in. He keeps it in his attic and he sometimes pulls it down and he's like, he thinks it's the coolest thing he's ever seen. He's like, man, you've been, you've been writing for a long time, Nikki. You've been writing for a long time. That's like my impression of my dad. Um, but yeah, I, I really like how this YouTube channel allows me the opportunity to get back into writing because it's something that I always thought I was going to do when I got older. I, I was going to write like novels and screenplays and stuff, but you know, life just kind of happens. Now I work in marketing and I do this and a bunch of other stuff, but I love writing. It's just, gosh, it is such a time sink. Uh, usually like if I was to fill this entire video, um, I think what, it's like 25 minutes, 26 minutes, uh, that takes a about eight pages like eight pages worth of uh dialogue we're talking like single spaced i think 14 point font so uh that's a lot that's a lot to write in a week when you also have like a day job and a family and a life outside of you know work and all that other stuff but um i'm really excited that i get to i get to like do this again now that i get to write like i used to and i'm, I'm even more excited that uh, there are people here on this channel who enjoy it. I mean, that's crazy. The, the first time I tried this, it was just kind of on a whim because I was getting really bored with the content I was putting out. And all of a sudden that Dragon Ball Super video, it just like popped off. And I think we got like a hundred subscribers from that video alone and all these like incredibly positive comments. And so I was like, all right, I guess this is what I'm doing now. Um, but writing is hard. Writing is really hard, uh, but this was easy. When you write about things that you know, and when you write about things that actually happened, things that were meaningful, it's really easy. And I'm just really glad that you guys were, were here to watch it. Also, I do wanna like kind of commentate on the uh, packs of Pokemon cards. If you pay attention here, in a second, I am going to absolutely botch one of these Pokemon cards, or three of them. But it's actually totally okay, because if you've noticed, the card pool is like really, really small. Um, I have a full set of all of these cards, including the rares now. 
um, because these weren't really meant for collectors. They were meant for trick-or-treaters, which I think is just such a cool idea. My wife and I, we actually bought a ton more of these booster, that's what they call them if you didn't notice, booster, uh, these sort of booster packs to pass out to trick-or-treaters this year. Uh, safe to say, we are gonna be the coolest adults on the block this year. I can confidently say that we are going to have more and more children uh, doubling back to our house for some more Pokemon cards. But, but yeah, it was a really cool idea. I wish other card companies would do something cool like this. I know it costs money, but man, I would love to see, I would love to see like a Digimon version of this or a Dragon Ball Super version of this. The Pokemon card company gets to do like so many crazy things because they're like the king of card games. Um, but this is really cool. I hope they do this more often. Oh, I think it's right here. Yep, I felt the scissors. It's only the back ones. But again, like I said, even after botching those, I still have, I still have a full set of every other card. So, um, but yeah, these these are cool. I'm very excited to uh, pass these out to kids this year. I'm also very excited to take my nephew out for his uh, his very first Halloween. I mean. That's so awesome. I meant that in this. I meant that in, in the script. Like I'm, I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. I, I love that little guy, man. He's so cool. He is only about. He's not a year yet. He turns a year old in November, and he. It's crazy. He's he's already like talking. Well, I say talking, but he he knows like the noises to make with the mouth that mean words. I don't think he knows what they mean yet because he says dad. Like he doesn't say dada. -da, he says dad. Um, but he will sometimes call my wife dad, and he will sometimes call his great-grandma dad. So, like, he can say the words, um, he just doesn't know what they mean yet. He also says pie, because every time we go over there, I don't know how this happened, it somehow became a tradition that my wife buys a pie. We go over there once a week for family dinner with my sister and her husband and my grandma, and for some reason my wife will buy a pie every, every week, <clears throat> and uh, she spoon-feeds him the like whipped cream on the top and he loves it oh man i remember when he first started like becoming cognizant you know how like babies do like for a while they're just kind of like there's nothing in that head uh but then the brain starts growing and um they start like reacting to things i remember like she would bring out the pie and his face would just light up and he would start like rocking back and forth in the little chair um it's it's so great and so he says pie now because every week from I think the moment he could sit up and start eating like actual foods, um, my wife would sit down with him at the end of every dinner and she would go, pie, pie, pie. And she would like spoon feed him um, every time. And now when they do it, she will not like feed him a bite until he says pie. So she like holds the spoon in front of him and she's like, say pie, pie. And, in, and she doesn't feed him the food until he's like, Hi. So he definitely, he definitely knows that word. Like he definitely knows what to associate with that. But yeah, we can't wait to take him trick or treating. Uh, we were gonna dress up this year, but life just got so busy and out of hand that we didn't didn't get costumes, which kind of sucks. But I mean, it's definitely not about the costumes this year. It's one hundred percent about that little guy. It's all about little man. Ah, it's crazy how like quick time goes by it's also crazy how like i wanted to work it into the script a little bit more but i couldn't figure out how to do it without being redundant i think it's crazy how like holidays feel still like holidays right but in different ways like it still feels like halloween to me but it doesn't feel like halloween like when i was a kid it's still good it's still great it's just different you know like pie we get it. We we get little man a, a little, a different pie every week. Despite them all being different flavors, they're all still great. Just like all of these holidays and this nostalgia. But anyway, I think this is the end of the video. Um, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. This has been an awesome first year here on YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna be doing another special. I'm gonna be doing another special um for the holiday uh still kind of figuring out what it is that i want to do because i also want to do something different and i don't know if i want to do this yet but regardless of what i do i know that you guys are going to watch it and i'm going to greatly appreciate it so thank you guys so much for watching it means the world to me um i'll catch you next time peace